Did you know that more than half of Americans felt that inflation is going to have a big negative impact on the long-term financial goals? And even further, one out of every five who were surveyed felt that inflation was the number one problem affecting the United States today. Not Ukraine and Russia's war, not COVID-19 or our divided political system, not even gas prices, and not even climate change. They felt that inflation was the number one problem. The thing that we have to ask ourselves is, is this a really a warranted concern? Or is this a result of overconsumption of negativity that has surrounded it? And the thing is that the newsreels, headlines, and thumbnails are filled with this negativity. And the reason why is because it gets people to click. But on my channel and on my updates, I would never do that. I always make sure I'm presenting you with the relevant data, whether it's good or bad. And all this information will be collected from a number of sources and presented to you in what I hope to be an informative yet entertaining way. And if you like this type of stuff, by all means, please click on the subscribe button, like this video, and even hit the notification bell. Because the more people who do that, it really motivates me to create more stuff just like this. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's dive on in. If we look at inflation and we look at rising interest rates and rising house prices, we can see that it obviously could affect housing affordability. But let's really talk about it. And I want to start with this graph here from Keeping Current Matters. What we will notice that if we compare January 2021's interest rate of 2.73 with a $300,000 loan amount, we will see that we have a payment of about $1,221.55. Now let's compare that same loan amount to today's rate. This is May 20 of 22, and it were about 5.27%. And we can see that our monthly payment increased by about $440. This indeed is a pretty significant burden for a good part of the of the buying pool. And then if we add in things like rising gas prices, food prices and other housing amenities, we can see that this can be a big problem for a lot of people. And, and this especially affects first time home buyers who are typically buying their starter home. And they are hit the hardest because they generally have less assets and less income to help offset or minimize these effects. The good news, though, is that there is a part of this story that very few other people are covering, and that is salary and wages. So salary and wages is the third part of this factor. And you can see if you look at this chart here and follow along, the salaries and wages has been increasing over time steadily uh, year over year. And NARS research ec economist noted that on average, the American worker is short about $217 a month. However, that's hardly enough to have a drastic impact on the overall market and nowhere close to causing a market to crash. Now, the few videos that we've done prior to this, we spoke about inflation and the truth be told, inflation, it can get really, really deep. I'm going to allocate a full video just on that topic. But for the purposes of this video, we have to understand that inflation is just a small part of the whole economic cycles that we go through as a nation, especially a nation who's run on credit and debt. So any country where we consume so much product and we pay for it with so much debt. Inflation is just a natural byproduct of that system. For example, right now in America, for every dollar that we spend, 94% of that or 94 cents of that is borrowed money that we have to pay interest for. So basically we are living beyond our means and eventually we're gonna have to pay that back. And inflation is just part of that process. Now, whether you lived through one before, the things that we have to understand that they've happened before and they're going to happen again. And I'm saying this, so I don't want you to, the fear mongers on the news or on YouTube or wherever, else you get your content to scare you into thinking that this is something unique it's not it's just a normal part of their overall economic process for the type of economy that we run all right so we just mentioned a second ago that the average american family is paying a couple hundred bucks more than they were before however how that has really had no impact at all on the supply demand factor in the housing market at this time and the reason why we know that is because we have data at our fingertips take a look at this graph right here now you're going to see in this graph that the darker shaded blues are uh, indicators of more demand on the buyer side of the equation. So the darker the blue, the bigger the demand of housing for that for that particular region. You can see that there are no shortage of people wanting to buy a home at this time. Now, in contrast, let's look at the inventory. Inventory is at all time lows. You look at this graph right here and on the far right hand side, you can see the months of inventory are less than two. And even last year, they were at two and a half or less. That's extremely, extremely low. So if you combine the information between the buyer side and the seller side, you can see that we're clearly in an extremely strong seller market, which means increasing of of the prices. So you might be asking, why is this? Why are your sellers not moving right now? Well, there's two different types of sellers. One is new construction, which we'll get into in a second. And then you have sellers or homeowners who are resellers. So they live in the house that they're currently, that they're going to sell. Let's talk about them first. Now, the thing with them is they have some reluctancy to move forward because when you, you have to buy in a market that you sell in. 
and they know if they sell their property, they might not have the ability to just get whatever house they want. They might have to settle. There might not be something there. They might have to rent a house for a little bit or live with friends. And on top of that, a lot of these people have refinanced their mortgages in the threes and twos. And with mortgage rates right now in um, the 5% range, it's really hard to motivate some sellers to take that big financial risk of selling their place and then trying to find something that's even better while paying more on their interest rate. And even on top of that, with the pandemic still kind of going on, sellers have concerns about people coming to their house and possibly getting them or family members sick. It's a, it's a very valid concern. And that leaves us with new construction home or builders. With builders, even prior to the pandemic, they were a little bit behind. And now ever since, we have stronger immigration policies and we also have stimulus packages, making it harder to find a more affordable workforce. In addition to that, we have supply chain issues and price hikes like lumber, for example, is up 300%. So so the higher pricing of products for to build the properties in addition to having a harder time finding a workforce has even exaggerated the problem of our inventory issues. And this leaves us with interest rates. So let's talk about that. Interest rates are higher than they were in over the last few years. But again, we need to look at this in perspective. I mean, if you look at this graph here, we're still at historically low interest rates. The thing is human nature, it simply kind of forces us to look at recent history as an indicative factor of where we are now. But we really have to look at the grand scheme of things. The rates are still low and you should probably lock in your mortgage if you have the opportunity to do so. Now, as I mentioned before, although interest rates are have been climbing, they are probably going to level off soon because the experts are predicting that inflation is going to taper off by the end of the year and that goes hand in hand with interest rates so to bring it all home we have interest rates that have gone up we have the average american household spending a couple hundred dollars more than they normally would we have home prices rising we have inflation and you're probably wondering well how does this all tie in to housing prices and housing market well according to this chart not a whole lot and this is really in regards to interest rates so what you're looking at here is the last five times that the interest rates have increased one percent or more and take a look you'll notice that home sales for the most part did decline or reduce a little bit but look at the prices the prices clearly increased meaning that the rise in interest rates had no effect on housing values whatsoever and you might be wondering well why is this well the the immediate news of interest rate hikes will get on the fence buyers off the fence and what that means is that they might be concerned that the interest rates are going to continue to rise and they do want to buy a house so they move sooner than later and then with this new influx of buyers that were on the fence now in the act of buying pool they're adding to the competition which reduces supply even more because it increases the demand right so then the prices further go up. Now, if we look at the history, we can also see that during previous rate hikes that occurred in markets previously, that they had an average of 4.8 months of housing inventory. And we already discussed earlier that we are closer to 1.9. So this is more than double. So taking all of this into account, there's no wonder why experts all agree that the housing prices are going to continue to rise to at least 2026. And they believe that on average, if you put all their numbers together, it's going to be around the mid 20% range. So if you are a buyer and you are waiting for the market to crash, well, you probably want to come back here around 2027. And even then it's probably not going to crash. But let's say that it did. Well, we have noticed that the housing prices since World War II have steadily risen with only one decline and it quickly recuperated its value in just a few short years. On top of that, you are have to take into account that if the market does crash in 2027 then it has to crash back to the levels of today which are being the mid 20 percent range then you have to also add into the into that factor that you're probably going to likely pay a higher interest rate so it just doesn't make sense to wait to buy i've been hearing this over and over in my career year after year after year and the market has simply never crashed there was a recession and we got out of it and if you're a seller well this is going to become the worst realtor in history when i talk to sellers because i don't ever tell my sellers to sell a house if you can can hold on to a property, whether if you're financially capable or if it's something that you're just able to do, then by all means do it. If you can't, that's understandable and very common also. So don't feel bad if you can't. But however, if you do have the means to hold on to a property and you have the, the mental capacity to, I guess, uh, be a landlord and have tenants, I recommend you holding on to your property as long as possible because the greatest growth and generational wealth is through the passing of real estate from one generation to another generation. So with that said, though, if you do want to sell your house or if you're thinking about buying a house in the southeast florida market then by all means reach out to myself and my team our information's in the description of this video and we will love to take care of you and if you like this video and you want to see more just like it please hit the subscribe and notification button like this video and once again it will motivate me to create more with that i'll see you all around and have a great day